recent times, the South China Sea has become a hotspot of geopolitical tension, with various nations vying for control over its waters and resources. But the stakes have escalated dramatically with the deployment of 25,000 U.S. Marines and sailors to the region. In this video, we will examine the reasons behind this large-scale military confrontation and the potential implications it holds for the world. Welcome to our channel. Today, we bring you an in-depth analysis of a conflict that has captured the world's attention. The U.S. Marines' deployment to the South China Sea. This strategic region has been a focal point of international tensions, and the latest developments could have far-reaching consequences. To understand the current situation, we must first look back at the historical context of territorial claims in the South China Sea. China's expansive Nine Dash Line claim and the disputes with neighboring countries have long been a contentious issue. With maritime trade routes and valuable resources at stake, tensions between China and other nations have risen in recent years. The deployment of 25,000 U.S. Marines and sailors represents a significant escalation in the region's tension. China's assertive actions and military buildup have raised concerns among neighboring countries and the international community. In response, the United States has reinforced its presence to protect its interests and support its allies. The Navy and Marines are taking a second crack at an exercise that will simulate a massive global conflict and connect the actions from a single sailor at a radar console up through the decisions made by the Secretary of Defense. Large Scale Exercise 2023 kicks off next month and will link 25,000 sailors and Marines across 22 time zones, seven fleets, six U.S. combatant commands and a blend of live and virtual training that will test the suppositions of key warfighting concepts for both services. The Marines and the Navy believe the future of maritime conflict will require units to be spread across thousands of miles and have them strike adversaries simultaneously and then disperse. Distributing the force allows us to actually do more with that force so that it punches above its weight. Fleet Forces Commander Admiral Daryl Cottle told reporters on Monday. Cottle and Lieutenant Gen Brian Kavanaugh, Commanding General of Fleet Marine Forces Atlantic, will lead the exercise. The command and control and logistics challenges of linking scores of ships and aircraft and ground units together prompted Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Mike Gilday to order the original exercise series, which ran for the first time in 2021. LSC 2021 linked the Navy's distributed maritime operations, the Marines' expeditionary advanced base operations, and littoral operations in a contested environment together in one worldwide event. While the planners were careful to single out different countries, concepts like DMO and EABO and LOCE are designed to maximize the advantages of a smaller, more technologically advanced U.S. force against a larger naval adversary like China. The idea of is this notion that we're going to sail at such a distance and in such a formation that we don't present ourselves as an obvious military formation that brings to their enemy fires, but while still maintaining the ability to provide mutual support to one another, U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Sam Paparo said in February, LSE 2023 running from August 9th to 18th, allows the Navy and Marines to prove how it will be able to link the dispersed formations to operate together. We want to build a more competent and lethal force. We want to be able to demonstrate that we can globally synchronize this exercise. And then finally, we want to be able to show that we can fight and win against our adversaries using the live virtual constructive training environment. Captain Chris Narducci, Lead exercise planner told reporters on Monday, Fleet forces and the Marines folded in other training events, like the amphibious exercises, Bold Alligator and Dawn Blitz, and composite unit training exercises for carrier strike groups to the larger LSE-23. So, if a sailor at a sonar console makes a tactical decision as part of the COMPTUEX for the Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group, it could affect the scenario across the globe as part of the live, virtual and constructive training. In total, the exercise will encompass six carrier strike groups, two live, four virtual, 
three amphibious ready groups, one BLIV, two virtual, 25 live ships, and more than 50 virtual ships. All those inputs will be routed to nine maritime operations centers and then to the Central Command Node in Norfolk at the Naval Warfare Development Center. Just running the exercise will take more than a thousand people. Of military capacity and capabilities can be strained in any conflict with a near-peer competitor. The ability to synchronize those operations is extremely important. There is an old boxing analogy that goes, precision beats power and timing beats speed every time, Cottle said. To conduct high and modern warfare in a distributed maritime operational construct, you have to work on precision and timing. To do that, you got to link together these maritime operations centers so that we have the same operational picture. Based on the lessons of first exercise from two years ago, the services expanded the scope and added an additional command and control element to include 15 retired general and flag officers to act as senior leaders in the exercise, including former U.S. Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Scott Swift and former U.S. Naval Forces Europe Commander Admiral Jamie Falco. What you have to do is you have to fight with the force you have and then adjust its ability and its capabilities and its training and how you posture it and in how you train to it and teach the sailors and marines to fight in the environment," Cottle said. Our ability to distribute our maritime forces and ability to command and control it because distributing that allows us to actually do more with that force. So that punches above its weight. But also, I've got a marine course that I can bring to bear. The conflict in the South China Sea has far-reaching geopolitical implications. It not only affects the countries directly involved, but also has ripple effects on global politics and trade. As the world's two largest economies face off in the region, many nations find themselves in a delicate balancing act to maintain diplomatic ties while safeguarding their interests. The stakes couldn't be higher. The potential consequences of this large-scale conflict are immense. From regional instability to a broader economic impact, the situation demands careful monitoring and analysis. How this situation unfolds will shape the dynamics of international relations for years to come. Thank you for joining us as we delved into the conflict unfolding in the South China Sea. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more insightful analysis on global events. Remember to hit the like button and share this video with others. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.